Come here, my man. Do you like your place here? I mean, so far as you've gone? I find it very entertaining. <laughs> yes, we are a very entertaining family. You really think you're going to like it here? Well, I must admit it's more desirable than living in a packing case on a city dump. Oh, that's where I met you, isn't it? Yes, miss. Oh, yes. Yes, I remember now. We were playing some sort of a game. A scavenger hunt, I think they called it. We needed a forgotten man. I asked you to go to the Waldorf Ritz Hotel with me, and uh, I'm a little bit hazy as to just what happened after that. I pushed you into an ash pile. Oh, yes, of course you did. It was very amusing. They were nice, clean ashes. I'm very sorry, miss. <laughs> I didn't mind at all. It was very amusing. Have you a handkerchief? There's a spot on my shoe. Would you see what you can do about it? I could have you fired, you know, but I like to see things wriggle. When I get through with you, you'll go back to your packing case on the city dump and relish it. People don't make a practice of pushing Cornelia Bullock into ash piles. I'll make your life so mid... I heard what you said to Godfrey. So what? So what? You leave him alone. So who's going to make me leave him alone? If you don't, you'll get a good sock from me. Oh, the physical type. What I say goes. Since when did you start falling in love with butlers? I'm not in love with him. He's, he's my protege. Oh, your protege. That's why you're picking out his suits for him. Suppose father hears about this. How long do you think Godfrey will last? Father isn't going to hear about it. You seem terribly sure of everything. If father hears about Godfrey, he's also going to hear about you and that sappy college boy. I don't know what you're talking about. But if father does hear about it, I'm likely to do a little socking myself. So little Red Riding Hood didn't have enough feminine charm to trap a wolf her own age, so she falls in love with the butler and lives happily ever after on an ash pile, if you know what I mean. I know what you mean, if you know what I mean. May I come in? You're in, aren't you? Very interesting book. The Greeks of the Middle Ages. Oh, Irene would like that. <laughs> you love the Middle Ages, don't you, dear? Oh, you like to give me a gift. Get to the cat and play ball, ball, and I'm going to do some little black eyes with my sisters. Ah! Insinuating that I rode a horse up the front steps last night? Maybe that wasn't a horse I saw in the library this morning. Well, I'm positive I didn't ride a horse into the library because I didn't have my riding costume on. It was Irene who rode the horse up the front steps. What horse? Don't play innocent. I begged you not to do it. I didn't ride Did you her. make these, Godfrey? Oh, it's got I helped. Oh, they must be wonderful. I'd like to help sometime if you'll let me. I feel honored. You might as well face the situation. I have lost a lot of money lately. You have? Yes, I have. Well, maybe you left it in your other suit. Well, if things keep on like they're going now, it won't be long till I won't have another suit. Which ones are poisoned? Thank you. While we're on the subject, how about this business of certain people picking up anybody they find on the city dump and dragging them into the house? For all we know, we might all be stabbed in the back some night and robbed. Who's going to stab who? Well, we don't know a thing about certain people. Someone should speak to Irene about her habit of picking up strays. What's a stray? You shut up. Me? No, Cornelia. I will not shut up. My life is precious to me. It won't be in a minute. Now, now, children. Come, Carlo. Come and get some nice hors d'oeuvres. I think we should get our help from employment agencies. Well, I don't know, but what I agree with Cornelia. No, darling. She's not having a spell. That's old <laughs> stuff. Oh, hello. Darling. So what is all this nonsense? Will you be quiet? You never did understand women. Why don't you get a doctor? I don't want a doctor. Do you want an ice bag? No, I don't want an ice bag. I want to die. Oh, no, you mustn't do that. She makes me ill. Let's get out of here. Carlo, do the ghost the trouble. Godfrey Park, you old mug. Oh, do you know Godfrey? Know him? We went to Harvard together. I'm afraid you've confused me with someone else, sir. I'm Smith. Remember? <laughs> sure you're Smith. But we did go to college together. Or did we? Imagine a butler with a college education. He's not really the butler. And a very good one. You mean this is not a gag just for my benefit? Uh, Mr. Gray neglected to tell you that when we were in Harvard together, I was his valet. Was he a good servant, Tommy? Excellent. What's the idea? I'll tell you later. And Mr. Gray never complained. When? No, I have very few complaints about Godfrey's work. I'll tell you tomorrow. It's one day off. Strange you never gave Mr. Gray as a reference. You see, I left Mr. Gray under very unusual circumstances. What circumstances? I'd rather Mr. Gray told you about that. Well, don't go away. Come here. Come here and tell us all about it. 
You know, Tommy, Godfrey's a very mysterious person. Nobody seems to know anything about him. Don't go away, Godfrey. No, no, don't go away, Godfrey. Uh, you see, I, I didn't want to say anything about this. Uh, but you see, Godfrey had been working for us as a butler and, and, and whatnot, and, and things have been going along very well when, when all of a sudden it happened. Just like that. You're sure you want me to tell all this, Godfrey? Well, you see, uh, as I said, he'd been working for us for some time when one day he came to me and said, Mr. Gray, he said, I trust my work has always been satisfactory, he said. And I said, why, of course. I, I said, I, I've never had more satisfactory work in, in all my life. And he said, thank you, Mr. Gray. He was always a very courteous man, Godfrey. Godfrey is still extremely courteous, especially in the morning. Well, it's not much of a story, really. Maybe we'd better skip it. Oh, come on, Tommy, and finish it. You can't stop in the middle. Well, let me see. Where was I? Oh, you were telling us how very polite Godfrey was. Yes, and that's where I say that Godfrey was still very polite. Well, thank you, Mrs. Bullock. It's a pleasure to have you say so publicly. That's my nature, Godfrey. I never say anything behind your back that I won't say in public. Now, that's what I admire about you, Angelica. Well, that's nice of you, Tommy. What about the story? Well, anyhow, Godfrey came to me and said, I trust my work has been satisfactory, sir. That was about the gist of it, wasn't it, Godfrey? And those may not have been my exact words, sir, but that was about the gist of it. All right, we'll settle for that. You said he was very satisfactory, and then he said thank you, and then what? Naturally, I had to take an attitude. You don't make sense. What kind of an attitude? Well, the only kind I could take toward a faithful servant. But Godfrey decided in favor of his wife and five children. Five children? Little Claudia, I don't even remember proposing. You're always proposing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which one did you take me up on? All of them. <laughs> How do you think Godfrey will feel about your engagement? What has Godfrey got to do with it? I wonder. Oh, you mind your own business. All right, Godfrey, let's have those. Come on, everybody. All Aren't you going to congratulate Irene Godfrey? She just got herself engaged. Well, I'd be very happy to. Godfrey, come congratulate Irene. May I congratulate you, Miss Irene? I wish you all the happiness in the world. Godfrey, let you and I have a good cry. How about lunch by hotel tomorrow? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, do you prefer soda or ginger ale? Uh, both. Twelve o'clock? Very good, sir. <laughs> 